Hello, so we're back for another session of our reading of What is Philosophy by Deleuze and Gattari. And we are concluding the introduction today. Um, so, philosophers, they write, have not been sufficiently concerned with the nature of the concept as philosophical reality. And this is still true today. If you um, look on YouTube or, or um, published papers, etc., the um, reflection on the concept itself are rare or they are merely confined to um, logic and uh, analytics. But there is not a lot of focus on the embodied concept. And here, once again, it is important to note that the uh, usual opposition that is made between Deleuze and Hegel is actually probably somewhat superficial. And actually they write here at the end of the Introduction, Hegel powerfully defined the concept by the figures of its creation and the moments of its self-positing. The figures become part of the concept because they constitute the aspect through which the concept is created by and in consciousness through successive minds. Whereas the moments from the other aspect according to which the concept posits itself and unites mind in the absolute of the self. In this way, Hegel showed that the concept has nothing whatever to do with a general or abstract idea, any more than with non created wisdom that does not depend on philosophy itself. So, concepts are not um, mathematical objects, right? So there is a becoming world of the concept, and, and uh, this um, supposes a historicity of the process, of the concept. There are moments, and it supposes a form of subjectivity, right? But this might appear to be somewhat um, contradictory or a paradox. Uh, there, there are elements in the concept that are subjective, and we'll come back to that. Now, of course, then comes a little critique of Hegel um, in the sense that it re this movement, this dialectical movement of the self reconstitutes universals and the, um, the embodiments, the personal embodiments of the con concept become, they write, they are treated as ghostly puppets. Now, see to what extent this is unfair and and I think it's very important today to read uh, and this is what I will be doing in this uh, reading uh, we need to read uh, Deleuze and Gattari with Hegel and this is my project that I call uh, Creolectus is a sort of a reconciliation or perhaps a new form of half hebum between Hegel and uh, Deleuze. But what is important in the sentence that I've read is that the concept posits itself, right? So they write that the concept has this autopoietic aspect. And this, a little bit later, um, 
when we'll come back to that, but they write, the concept is knowledge, but knowledge of itself. So this might appear a little bit strange because it's, it might appear to give a sort of a independent life to the concept while it was also said that concepts are embodied. So if the concept posits itself, um, it might need a worldly embodiment, but its origin becomes uh, somewhat um, complex, right? We cannot, at the level of the introduction, the reader can only guess what that might mean. This self-positing. And self-positing is not exactly creation. They write, creation and self-positing mutually imply each other. Because what is truly created from the living being to the work of art thereby enjoys a self-positing of itself or an autopoietic characteristic by which it is recognized. So autopoiesis is a concept um, created by uh, Maturana and Varela in the 70s and was probably um, a reference to that. It was an influential concept that uh, was meant to designate uh, the, um, the property of life as opposed to uh, non-living beings that organisms are autopoietic that they are they are self-referential in their uh, conatus if we are to use uh, a term proposed by Spinoza which means the uh, the persistence that the will to persist in one's being of course it's problematic here if we speak of will but uh, nevertheless we'll have to um, address this question um, of um, the subjectivity of the concept and often Deleuze and process philosophers are criticized uh, for example today by uh, speculative realists etc because um, the, um, the idea of a becoming, differential becoming, of a, a process, a creative process, non-anthropocentric uh, creative process, uh, cosmic becoming, creative evolution according to Bex Bergson, that would not explain emergence how um, individuated beings emerge. And I think it's more complex than that, but we will uh, slowly uh, come to that. But, okay, so, actually the paradox here is that the concept is, in a way, what de-universalizes um, abstraction, but is that contradictory to Hegel? Not necessarily. I mean, not necessarily if we uh, equate the universal with the positive moment of the dialectic, and uh, if we consider that once the concept has met its negation, it becomes more than universal, not only universal but also singular. And of course, the problem is how can a concept survive its singularity? There might be a point where a concept 
is so singular that it collapses into something else, something that is not philosophy, right? So the extent to which concepts belong to the discourse of philosophy, to the practice of philosophy, must be understood not as an impoverishment of the concept, but as an enrichment of philosophy. Philosophy is much more than a analytic discourse on the conditions of possibility of such and such practice. Philosophy is not a meta discourse on science only. Um, philosophy has to do with the presence of cosmic reasons, its deployment in the world. That's a very grand idea of philosophy um, that only you, if you're still here after 11 minutes, and me and, and a few others care about. Clearly, uh, most people don't care about this. But I think it's worth caring and next uh, session will be about entering in part one of this book, What is Philosophy? See you tomorrow.